Hello, hello everyone. Happy Wednesday. Thanks so much for stopping in here tonight, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks replay viewers for watching here on Periscope. And thanks YouTube viewers for checking in. Uh, YouTube viewers, if you'd like to participate in the chat right there, uh, join me on Periscope. I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central. Hey, Janet, thanks for coming in. All right, guys, we are continuing on block 53 of the Splendid Sampler. We only have today yet to work on it because uh, it's new block Thursday tomorrow. So I'm going to flip you around and we'll get going. Hey there guys, thanks so much for coming in tonight. Happy Wednesday. It, it feels weird. I haven't been here the last couple days. It feels like, I don't know, it feels like forever. I think that was the longest I've taken off uh, just the two days in a row from um, seeing you guys and chit-chatting. So I don't know, it feels like a long time. Oh, thanks, that's sweet. Uh, but we're gonna continue with Block 53 tonight. Uh, last time on, uh, uh, Sunday, it would have been Sunday, we uh, did all the outside border stuff, the outside star, and we didn't do anything on the inside. We So we didn't, uh, we didn't start, we didn't cut, so we're going to do all of this interior stuff tonight. And we may get to the point where we start assembling all the pieces. I don't know if we'll finish, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I'm hoping to get as far as we can though, because like I said, tomorrow is Thursday, which is new block day for the Splendid Sampler. Uh, if you're new, we're working on the Splendid Sampler Quilt Along. It's a free quilt along right now. It's at thesplendidsampler.com, and we are on block 53 of 100, and we get new blocks every Thursday and Sunday, and it is uh, plenty of time to come join. Like I said, it's free, and it's a huge community. There's over 20,000 people making quilts, so uh, and I, I'm working on every single block here, so you're welcome to join me, and we'll keep going through it. And if you're new here, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. I'm the author of Sew and Stitch Embroidery and a fabric designer, and I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central, although I wasn't here the last two nights. Yesterday was my 13th anniversary with my husband and uh, we the night before we went and saw uh, Raiders of the, not Raiders of the Lost Ark, the uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade in a movie in the park, which was just so much fun. Uh, just, that's gotta be like the best outdoor movie. <laughs> so alright guys, I am going to flip you around and we'll get you in. Hello, hello everyone. Thanks so much for coming. Alright. Here we are. Oh, it was fun. That's like one of the best movies. It's just so funny and just playful and I love it. That's my favorite Indiana Jones thing. Oh, thank you. It was a nice anniversary. It's kind of weird though because I feel like I kind of have that vacation slump now. Like, you know, like after I um, have driven, you know, from my parents' house. It's always, I'm always just super tired the next day, and that's kind of how I'm feeling today. All right, guys, we left off. We finished all the flying geese, and uh, we did that in that super weird way. Like, look, it looks super complicated. Uh, you can check out Sunday's video uh, to do that. Oh, thanks for my anniversary wishes, guys. So here's all my uh, flying geese. And I got the squares for the corners done. So now we are on the center area. I kind of color coded it here. Uh, we'll have to double check with the letters here for the colors. But all right, so we are on these the inside units. So we need to sew BE triangles together. BE, those are the, the little ones. Press seam open make four, four of those units, and then sew a triangle C to the BE unit and press open and make four of those. Okay, so we haven't cut those out or anything yet. So B and E, we need to make two and three quarter inch squares and cutting twice diagonally. And for, what's the other one, C, we need to, okay, so this is like that really specific number again, so two and three eighths cut once diagonally. Okay, so let's, oh, but we need two squares of that. So, okay, two and three eighths. I think I might, I think I grabbed enough fabric here. So for those 
those uh, bigger squares that we just cut on the diagonal, I was going to do more of the kitty fabric. Let's see, we needed two and three A's. I can't quite remember if I could fit that in here. Two and three A's. Oh, it's awfully close on this side. There's got to be somewhere that I can get close. You know, I think I might use this piece anyway. I, I, um, I just have a, like a tiny little piece here. I, I have enough except for a tiny corner. But I think I'm going to risk it. So I'm going to just, I'm going to, I have a little blip here and a little blip here. Um, but I'm going to just, I, I'd like to use up this fabric. You know what, but first I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to spray this. I haven't, I haven't starched any of this. What about this piece? Can I get the two and three eighths out of here? If I can't get it out of these scraps, then I'm going to have to get it, I'm going to have to cut for my bigger piece. Two, three eighths. Okay, this one, if I cut, if I go up here, I'll have enough. Okay, good. So I'll have enough, uh, I'll have not really enough of this, but I'm going to use it anyway. I'm just going to, it's just going to, I'm going to have like a 30 second um, that I don't have available here and here, but this one I have enough. So let's start there and I'm going to just spray those and uh, then we'll cut those first and then I'll spray and cut the next ones. So I'm spraying them with starch just because we're going to be cutting these on the bias and sewing on the bias, and the bias is that is the diagonal of the fabric uh, that doesn't go with the grain. It's the diagonal, so it gets really stretchy. So I want to make sure that I, I have them a little stiffer with the, the starch spray just to kind of take care of. Um, hopefully it won't stretch as much when, when we sew. We have all these tiny triangles, so I think that's probably a good idea. All right, good. They're a little stiffer now. Okay, let's trim these. Okay, now I gotta get that good two, okay, just to check. Two and three eighths, yep. Two and three eighths there. And just a little off the edge here. That's the best we're gonna get. This is a straighten up edge. Tilting it actually actually is giving me a little bit more, so I will have to go all the way around to trim. All right. Got those edges. So yeah, see here, I'm just gonna I'm gonna just have a little tick off of the edge here, but I thought it was close enough. So two and three eighths and two and three eighths here. We're gonna have that little edge here as well. Oops, go around the top. Okay, and then this we need to cut in half on the diagonal, so I'm gonna do it on this diagonal just because I can see those diagonals, the other that tip's been compromised a little bit, so we're gonna do the diagonal here. All right, so here is the first of our two triangles. Let's just make a little pile here. Oop, there. And then the second one. Let's start by just getting rid of some of this. That's going to just be annoying. Okay. Two and three of this. I'm not using fabric. Well, you know what? I... Uh, I used, uh, I am in, in the quilt as a whole, I am using some fabric. I, des I designed, but I'm actually not using a whole lot of what I designed, just because I kind of, I designed more kind of um, kids fabric, like, uh, like just cutesy animals and that sort of stuff. And I wanted, uh, I wanted my quilt to be kind of more graphic. I wanted to do a lot of blues and uh, like deep dark blues and not so many characters in it so I didn't I didn't pick a lot of my own fabrics 
my mom's using a bunch or more of more of uh, my fabrics and hers. But yeah, I mean, I suppose if I was super smart, I would have done it in my fabric. Then <laughs> you guys would be seeing my fabric a lot more. But um, that's okay. So I'm a little hair off here, like less than a thirty second of an inch. Uh, so this piece was just a tiny bit small too. But I think, I think, it, I think we're gonna be just good enough still. Oh, it was fun. I mean, <laughs> the movie was kind of mad, but it was fun to still see it. We went and saw, this is just like a silly movie to see, but I, I remember liking the movie when I was little. We went and saw Pete's Dragon. <laughs> and uh, it was cute. It was sweet. It was, it, it you know, they did what they could with it, really. But I remember really liking Pete's Dragon when I was little. I mean, I actually don't remember anything um, really about the original movie, but I remember we watched it a lot. So now I gotta, I want to go find it again and, and watch it again now that I've seen like the current one again. But I don't know, that was all right. Uh, uh, Indiana Jones the night before was definitely better. <laughs> but we gotta go to our favorite uh, pizza place. Oh, you watched it over and over? See, so I did too, but... I, okay, so Cora, was there a... There was like a lighthouse. Like, there... The whole thing was set, like, on the ocean in a lighthouse, right? Or am I thinking of a completely different movie? Because that's kind of, like, all I remember, and now I'm not sure if I'm right anymore. Yes, that's where they lived! Okay, so there's no lighthouse and no anything like that um, in this new movie. <laughs> so, spoiler. Yeah, you have the original on VHS. You know what? I think I have the original on VHS with, like, commercials. I think we, I think we recorded it from TV. So I, I think it's full with, like, 80s commercials and stuff in it, which makes it, you know, extra awesome. All right, let's, let's see what's next. All right, I need the, the B and E squares, two and three quarters. Yeah, so no lighthouse. So, okay, I was thinking of the right movie then, because in my head I'm like, wait a sec, is... Is that the one with the lighthouse? And I thought it had a lighthouse and all these other things. I'm gonna just spray these. This one's pretty thick. I don't probably need to spray this one, but I'm just gonna do it anyway. Um, that's weird. It was, oh, there's even a song about it. Okay, so they did have a song in, in this too, as if it was, you know, part of the movie a little bit, this song. But, oh, interesting. So this is, this one was all set in the woods. And uh, it was a song, the song was about them in the woods, too. Like, dragons in the woods or something like that. So, yeah, okay, so I don't remember anything about the, the original, which seems weird to me because I know we watched it a ton. But I, I know, like, the guy was, the, the dragon was animated and, um, you know, so it was, like, real, real, like, footage with an animated guy. And uh, that lighthouse thing, right? So... That was different, <laughs> but it was still cute and sweet and, but I mean, like, I don't know. I don't really know if it was really worth going, but it was just, you know, it was, it made me happy because of nostalgia's sake. I can't say that word ever. Nostal nostalgia. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely for kids, but it's not fast-paced, like, like kid movies now, you know, kid movies are just like doo, 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 all over the place. This is, this was slow. Like this was, the whole thing was like singing a lullaby. Like the whole thing was just really kind of slow and sweet. Uh, Robert Redford is in it though. And I don't know, that was kind of weird. Um, all right, let's see where we're at with this. So two and the three, two and three quarters. Yeah. Aren't they? Like, all kids' movies are so fast. This had, like, a little bit of that old 80s movie kind of feel, just a hair. Uh, like, the like for a kids' movie, I thought the beginning was really scary. And, and uh, not really scary, but scary for a kid. And that's kind of how 80s movies were. I mean, 80s movies, they were kind of scary. Like, Never Ending Story and all those. So it had a little bit of that kind of a little scary than it probably should have been at the at the beginning. All right, two and three quarters. Ooh, can I even fit this? Okay, this is this is not the right size. 
I'm gonna have to cut this from somewhere else. Let's do it right here. Yeah, 80s movies, they are pretty dark. All right, so I'm gonna just redo that. I was thinking I needed less, but I need two and three quarters. That's bigger than what we had before. So I'm gonna get it out of this spot. It was cute and sweet, but I don't know if it was worth going to or seeing in the theater or I don't know, but whatever. We were uh, in the theater first, so we got prime, we got to test out different seats and then <laughs> just do stupid stuff like that beforehand. All right, now I'm gonna get the two and three quarters out of here. It was fun still. It was fun to go to a movie. So I do have a little cut out of here, so I have to be, I'm gonna start by trimming from here. Two and three quarters. And then we went to a restaurant here in town, uh, which is, I think it's kind of newish. And it was, it was delicious, but it, it's one of those things where they're like, we're a delicious restaurant and we know it. It's not like a, it wasn't like a, a chill, I'm going to just a chill place down the street, but the food happens to be amazing. Like, it wasn't like that. It was a, we have good food and we know it and we're going to be like overly explain how good it is to you. You know what I mean? It was kind of like one of those places, but I suppose that's the kind of place that you go on your anniversary. <laughs> It was fun. It was good. But not our general vibe, I suppose. <laughs> the food was actually really delicious, except for I had a, an old fashioned, and I don't know if you guys drink old fashions or anything, but there are, there are a few, you know what, we didn't actually dress up, we were like way we were the schluffiest people there for sure. Actually, there was a, a family there that looked like they just came from a twins game or something. They were schluffier, schluffier than us, but we weren't too far behind. <laughs> we figured who cares. Uh, I got a little tick in here yet. Should, should have left the ruler there, but all right, there we go. All right, done with these fabrics. But I got an old fashioned, and there are some really good places in town for like some really good old fashioned. So I kind of like kind of testing out these fancy restaurants, old fashions. So I gotta cut this on the diagonal twice. Let's just let's just go here. And when I saw the ingredients of this old fashioned on their menu, I kind of knew I shouldn't have gotten it, but I got it anyway because I'm testing these old fashions to find like the best old fashioned in town. And uh, so an old fashioned is usually made with bourbon and then it has like, like an orangey flavor. And this was made with rum and had like a pineapple in it. And I'm like, this is not an old fashioned and this is gonna be not what I want. But I got it anyway, just cause it said old fashioned and it was exactly how I expected it. It tasted like Oh, tropical rum drink with pineapple in it. I, I like. I have no idea why. Like, why they called it an old fashioned? It just didn't make sense at all. And so we actually had to rename it. Like we we pretended it was called something else just so we weren't thinking old fashioned when we drank it. Uh, so we called it a uh, what did we call it? Uh, like a Jamaican John <laughs> or a Jamaican Johnny? Because my my husband's name is John. And uh, it was like, it was a rum drink, so I don't know. Then it tasted a hair better, but I wouldn't have ordered it if it was called that. Anyway, <laughs> that, was, that was the weird thing from the restaurant. All right, we're done cutting out all these things though now, so we can, we can sew. But it was good. In general, it was, it was yummy. Just that drink totally threw me. Okay. Yeah, that makes the, the anniversary memorable. Yeah, that so we had the we. So we, pre, I repre, I pretended that I ordered the the Johnny the Jamaica Johnny or whatever from the menu instead of the old fashioned, and I ordered it because it was had his name in it. <laughs> so that was the story I was telling myself to make the drink a little bit better. All right. Oh my gosh, I have no control over 
Oh my god, there we go. God, I, I can, I'm always like weird with these triangles. I can never do it. All right, here we go. Let's just goes this way. <laughs> okay, there we go. And one more this way and there. <laughs> I just have to turn them like a million times to get it in the right orientation. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of placing them like this. And uh, yeah, they are, they are pretty tiny. So we did starch these, so I'm hoping that helps a little bit. But yeah, so now we're gonna, we're gonna sew these edges together and then press open, it said, and then after that, we're gonna sew these guys onto it. So this is gonna be, we're gonna have four of these when we're done. And then those are what, you know, we start connecting to, to these guys. So, okay, let's start here. We'll do all, we'll sew all of these and then press them all open. And then we will um, do those and press all those open. And then we're ready to assemble, kind of assemble the whole, the whole thing at that point, I think. Oops, sorry, I'm hitting the stand here a little bit. Okay. So what would be the best? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna sew starting at the flat point. I'm not gonna sew from, from this side, the, the little corner side. I think it'll be easier. To sew from the flat top. The bonus laundry block is cute. Yeah, is it? That's like for that, uh, who's doing that? Patchwork and quilting? American patchwork and quilting, is that right? I'm not sure. The, uh, okay, these are not the same size for some reason, but oh well. Uh, for that, that pillowcase challenge, I don't remember who's, who's in charge of that, that million, that million pillowcase challenge. All right, I'm doing my scant quarter, although that's a little more scant, I think, than it should be. Is that who it is? I, I can't remember who the, wasn't it a, um, a magazine that started that? Okay, I just, I should just stop talking about it because I clearly don't know what I'm talking about. I'll have to look it up, look it up again. But yeah, it's cute, the little clothesline with the little pillowcases on it. That'd be a cute one to do. I'm still, I'm still in finish up all, all my unfinished blocks mode before I start bonus blocks. Oh yeah, so I think they're, I don't know, they're teamed up somehow with that, I don't know. Yeah, it's a, it's a bonus block though. I think it's a bonus block kind of promoting promoting that project, that, that million pillowcase project, something like that. I'll, put, I'll look into it again. Can't quite remember. All right, let's get an ender in here. Oh, that wasn't, that didn't take long at all. Let's get the scissors, and you know what, I didn't get, I didn't use my, my uh, stiletto, but that's okay. Okay, yeah, it was pretty cute. I definitely liked it. I wonder if my mom was working on that one. I would think she'd kind of like that one. We harvested a bunch of our garden today. So I, uh, today was like a non-work day again. I, you know, it's one of those days, like I had to do the bills, which takes up so much of the day and then I uh we were out of food so I uh, got groceries and I didn't get any lettuce or anything from the grocery store because I knew we had a bunch of lettuce in the garden so it ended up being uh prep all the groceries which takes forever I cut up all the groceries and take care of it right away when I when I get it I'm pressing this open so I like pressing it to one side first and then I start pressing it open because if I, if I don't take care of all my, if I don't take care of all my uh, groceries right away, then, um, then they all go bad in the fridge. Like I have to have the day, well, I have to do it all at once because otherwise I'll just throw it in the fridge and they'll all just start rotting. All right, so there we go. That's kind of very red, white, and blue. <laughs> I'm... I'm not quite starting the whole 30 again yet, um, but 
in general, we're pretty much doing it. So um, I think we're gonna stop the alcohol now again. And you know, in general, that's the stuff I get from the grocery store is compliant. Um, although I did get some some chips today. Are oh, you starting with friends on the first September? I, I got some chips today just because we have so many tomatoes in our garden that I thought we needed uh, we needed to do some salsa with all that stuff because we have peppers and, and tomatoes in the garden. So I made an exception and got got um, got some chips, tortilla chips. But yeah, oh man. It was some good, 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 good salsa. But yeah, now my, now the fridge is stocked up again. But man, we we got uh, so much out of the garden. Here, I gotta show you guys this, just because I've never grown these before and I'm so stoked about it. But look, this came from our garden today. This looks like a full on grocery store, huge acorn squash. I'm so, Excited about it. The squirrels got it a little bit, but we'll just cut that off. Like stupid squirrels. Like they kind of they carved a little uh, pumpkin out of it. <laughs> but we have never grown those before, and and um, I'm just like super, super, duper excited about it. <laughs> but yeah, and so I, I picked a ton of tomatoes today, and and John made some salsa, and I. I picked more zucchini, and I picked that acorn squash, and some celery, and a bunch of carrots. Our characters are really weird. So we put a bunch of compost in the top, and I think our our um, ground must be really hard underneath it because the carrots grew about this long, like really big, but then they look like they're working really hard. So we got a little, a bunch of fat nubbin um, carrots but they're yummy, so I picked a bunch of those. And then we had some kale in the garden as well. And uh, I got all that prepped. But yeah, I have to prep it all right away because it'll just, if I, if I don't, like if I leave, if I leave something, like if I had bought radishes or something with all the leaves on and I didn't cut them up right away, like I didn't prep it for salads or prep it or you know cucumbers or zucchini or anything if i don't prep it right away it goes bad so like because like sometimes we're like ah, i don't feel like doing that let's just put it in the fridge and i'll deal with it later that never ever happens so when i go to the grocery store i have to know that i'm going to be prepping it all afterwards which takes kind of like a long time but now we're like good to go for for the week again we have food made and and uh all the vegetables are ready so we can just throw it all in whatever we want and there's no, there's no prep at all, really. So if, if we don't, that's like the only way we can survive during the week because we get totally in work mode and then, uh, then we just don't prep any food and eat crappy stuff. So it all has to be good to go already. All right, so now we get these guys on here. These pieces are actually a little bit these units are bigger than I thought they were going to be. But all right, so let's sew these guys on, and then uh, we're kind of done with this center area. Well, I was so excited. That was like our first kind of big harvesty thing in the garden. All right, so I'm going to just kind of try and center these on here. And uh, I'm just kind of going to line up the point with the diagonal, and I think we'll be fine. Okay, three, four of these, and then we'll be done. Oof, I'm going to have to guide it a little. And this is my scant quarter, so I just butt it up against the business card here. But it was kind of neat going to the grocery store today and only buying, like, my meat stuff. Because um, I knew, oh, I'm going to just 
I'm just gonna get everything from my garden for the greens. That was pretty exciting. Uh, we This is our biggest garden that we've had so far. And I think the garden that we babysat the most. So um, it's fun to have food from it. Actually, you know, it's not even that that we babysat it the most. It's, this year has been awesome for growing stuff compared to, I think, any other year that we've been here. Do you get these trimmed up after you press them? I am not sure if I need to trim these or not. I might trim the little cat ears. <laughs> we've been calling them kitty ears, I think. Uh, I may trim those off. Let's see, does it say? Oh, so it does say, it says the finished size should be two inches two inch squares. So yeah, so I will, I will check the size of these and, and trim them if they most likely, they probably will need to be. So yeah, so they did give a finished size. It's two inches. So once we press them open, that's, that's what we'll do right after. This pattern has been pretty exacting though. Like uh, some patterns, they give you a little leeway in um, in making your, your half square triangles and stuff so that you can trim them down. Like they make them a little bit bigger. This this because of all the funny angles, because they we made these in a special way that's, you know, like the, the flying geese that had a really specific, specific uh, sizes and you know we cut these on both the diagonals to get a specific size so they've been pretty exact with how they want their measurements. I can feel this when I was when I was sewing this I can feel it wanting to stretch and move and that's because I'm sewing on the bias so when you're sewing these be go slow and be really careful and because uh, it's not gonna it's gonna pull like when the machine you know the feed dogs, pull it through, it's going to want to stretch and move and and you just need to really keep keep it in check so it does that as little as possible. It's not, it'll feel a little different than your normal just squares because we are, we're, we're sewing on the diagonal here. Oh, oops, sorry guys. All right, let's trim these and then these units are done. Oh wait, but we got to trim them to the two inches yet. Does so starch help? Yeah, so that's that's the reason I'm kind of starching it is is it, it makes it a little stiffer and uh, the, the fabric a little stiffer which helps it not stretch as much. So we did do a block that was similar to this and that was before I started using starch and that was a bear. Like it, it, it was pretty difficult for me to um, to finish that one actually like I, I the machine kept eating it and it kept getting stretched and all that and and after that I started using starch on almost every block um, even if I didn't really need to just to just to help out a little I know I've been gone for the past uh, past couple days here it was my anniversary yesterday and uh, with my husband and uh, the day before that we we had, uh, we went and saw a movie in the park too. So this is the longest I've been gone, <laughs> just the, the two days, I think. So that's kind of funny. Oh, actually no, for the, uh, when I was in New York, that's, that's not true. When I was in New York, uh, over my birthday, that was the longest. I forgot about that already, sheesh. But I don't know, felt weird. Felt weird not doing this both those nights. Oh, thanks, Donna. All right, let's flip these seams open. I don't usually like doing open seams, but we're reducing bulk. Tomorrow you're cutting pieces for a huge skirt. Oh, that's fun. Oh, speaking of uh, clothing. So you guys remember that we talked uh, the other day about just um, different, or just going to, going to your local fabric shops and, and all that. And I was saying that I hadn't gone to the one that's kind of near me for like a long, long time. And it, it's one of those nice ones that treat you, treat you nice too. Like they have nice customer service and 
good products and all that, and they don't they don't stare at you funny when you walk in like, oh my god, why are you bothering me in my store? You know what I mean? Like how some some places are like that, which is just really too bad. Uh, but I'm like, you know what? I should patronize them a little bit more. So I looked I looked up um, I looked up their classes. So I'm, I signed up for one of their classes. I signed up for a t-shirt making class. Because uh, we also talk about, like, I don't know anything uh, clothing, sewing. Like, I, I haven't really done any of that. And uh, I was always kind of wanting to do, like, some knit stuff. Like, knit with uh, t-shirts and, and that sort of thing. Make t-shirts. There's one a half hour away. Oh, that's cool. So that, mine's about maybe 20 minutes a half hour away as well uh, at that store. So I'm excited. So that's not going to be till September, like some Saturday in September, like late September. But I'll definitely tell you guys how it goes. But I, I feel good about that. I feel good that, you know what, I should be signing up for a class there. And, and you know, got to keep, keep those good ones in business. So I'm, I'm pretty excited. And, you know, it's something I've been wanting to learn how to do, too. So I'm kind of stoked about that. But I could see, you know, I wear just, like, t-shirts all the time. So, I mean, it, it's not, it's like a long, it's a cute, like, long sleeve t-shirt. Uh, so I want to, um, I would totally make some of those, for sure. Like, I would, I would make a bunch of those. I could just, that's like my uniform, you know, just some three-quarter length t-shirts. Just make, a, make six of them, and that's, like, my wardrobe. It's crazy how quilt store can, I know, I just don't understand it. It is just, it's a customer service thing, and it's other industries too. It's like, it's just customer service. It's, it's all it is, like, make your, your store, make your guests feel welcome when they come in, and, you know, I don't, I just don't, I don't quite get it. Like, I don't know why that's such a thing. Oh, you definitely have a uniform to realize it. Funny. But yeah, I just... It's something I never understood. I mean, someone just walked into your store. Why are you treating them as if, you know, they're wasting your time or that they're going to just steal from you or whatever? Like, I don't, I just don't get it. All right, so let's, so when you find places that are good, you got to, you got to patronize them. Okay, so this needs to be, here we go. This needs to be two inches. So, see, I'm like, I'm really tight here. Like this is, like this one is. Uh, I'm a hair under the two inches here. So this one, this pattern is really exact. So I am gonna trim these off, but I'm I'm on the edge of these of these two inches. But I am still gonna trim these. Busy bee in New Mexico. Oh, that's oh busy bee. I think I've heard of that one before. They never. Oh wow! See now that's pretty awesome. Jeez, they never forget your name or anything. That's pretty amazing. There was a, a really nice another uh, nice quilt store that treats you nice and has great fabrics and stuff that was near here, but the owner moved to Portland, so that one's not here anymore. And that one was actually really close to me. I went to that one more often. There's other ones in, in St. Paul, I think, or or maybe it's not St. Paul. It's in like way north Minneapolis, which is the other side of where, where I'm at. Um, all right, so there we go. That's one. So that's why I just, you know, I don't get up there all the time. And, you know, I'm not buying a ton of fabric or anything either. All right, so this one is a little less than two inches. So this one, this one we could trim. Or a little more than two inches. This one will trim just a hair, at least on this edge. Everywhere else, it's on the two inch mark. But yeah, I'm super excited. I could totally see you making just a ton of t shirts, long sleeve t shirts. So I hope it fits, and I hope, yeah, I'm sure that's the whole part of the process is making sure it fits for you. And I think, I think in the class, I think you actually sew on your own machine, and you can, you can, uh, use a serger or a sewing machine. So I'm going to see if I can just, I'm going to bring just this guy over and see if it can do the job because that'd be awesome. But if it goes well, <laughs> we might be making a bunch of t-shirts, t-shirts uh, <laughs> here on Periscope when we're, at least when we're done with, with a splendid sampler. 
<laughs> so I could see uh, wanting to crank out some t-shirts. It'll be winter by then too, so I'll need a, need long sleevey things. All right, this one's pretty tight in here too. I just I just don't understand those places that aren't welcoming. There's there's a store by us uh, that I when I need some yarn stuff. Oh, Quilty Pleasures, great name. A oh, great thing. No, you see, there's some good there's good places out there, and people need to know about those places. You know, like there's a, a yarn place in my hometown uh, called the the Knitting Room, and they're just the sweetest people and stuff too. And and the store is great and great products and stuff like that. But then there's this yarn store by me here that, you know, every once in a while I need to go find some nice yarn, right? Uh, where you want to feel it and touch it, right? I mean, that's the bonus of a, of a brick and mortar shop, right? Uh, they are, I feel like every time I go in there that I'm so bothering them and like, ugh, a person who's not part of our little knitting group that's here or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, um, now I have to go and answer whatever questions they have and stuff. Like, I just don't get it whatsoever. I just don't get it. Um, so it always sucks going there, but you know, you need, every once in a while you need that one, you know, I need a certain size of knitting needle like today or something, you know, and, but, I would go there so much more often if it was a nice place. I mean, like, if this was, if they treated me nice and stuff, dude, I would so go to, like, their, you know, I'm sure they have some knitting group where they just sit around and knit and, or, like, and hang out or, you know, classes. I don't even know if they have classes, but all that stuff. I would so go there all the time because it's really close to me. I mean, I could, I could ride bike there maybe even, but, oh, it sucks going there. All right. Anyway, here is here is my. Uh, let's see if we can get this together. You know what? I think I'm gonna have to look at them just to see how it goes again. Okay, they go on the outside. All right, there. That's that's right. And then this guy goes here. Oh wait, no. He goes up here. These guys go here. Okay, and this one goes this way. I just, I don't know why I can't just get those triangles in the right spot right away. Get these corner guys in. Some, do some knitting too. Oh, oh, I'd love to do, so, you know, before the Splendid Sampler came along, I did do a bunch of, oh, you know what, I'm totally doing these backwards. Jeez, that would have been. That would have been something. Put those in backwards. But I, before the Splendid Sampler, I was doing a different stuff. I don't think I did knitting ever, but I was doing like other crafts and stuff too. And um... <laughs> thanks, Marianne. That's sweet. But seriously, I mean, they should be. I mean, you know, I know they deal with a lot of stuff, too, from customers, but still don't, like, assume right from the get-go that it's going to be a bad experience. I don't know. But, yeah, before the Splendid Sampler, I was doing some other things on, on here, too. So once we're, I mean, the Splendid, I mean, this is just kind of taken up all the time, which is fine. That's fine for right now. Um, oop, this goes this way. Just, just curious. I, I'm kind of curious what it would look like this way. It'll have like this square in the middle. I just, I just kind of want to see. I always like that um, you can change things around. So that'd be a way to do it too. Have like this square, this diamond holding in in the pinwheel. But I'm gonna do it the way the instructions are. I actually like it as the star. I just, I just always like seeing what else can come come of these designs. It's just kind of fun. All right. Kind of like I like the position of all all these guys. I think that's okay. 
the red bit sparkle. Oh, you know what? These almost look like little sparkles, these little whites in here, but I love, oh yeah, these little red bits. I love this fabric. I'm actually almost out of it. But yeah, when we're done with this blended sampler, we'll, we'll have to do more projects like that again. Like I want to do some painting on here again and uh, knitting and crochet. I actually have a, that purple doily that I, that I crocheted. I need to block that yet. Uh, I thought that would be fun to do on here. All right, we're ready to sew this together. And I think let's just crank this guy out. Let's just try and finish it. I mean, there's, there is kind of a lot of assembly. So it, it tells us the order to do it in, and it looks like we press everything open. All right, so one and two. So they're having us sew these two guys first. Three and four, okay. Then we sew these two together, then these two together, and then those two to here. And then these two, and then this and this. So I think what I might do is I'll do the top. Oh, we'll just go in order. I'll do, I'll do these. Oh, I guess I can't do it. Here, I'll, I'll do these two, then these two, then these two, then these two. And then I'll snip this off and then do this one. And this one. And then I'll cut it all off. And then I'll press them all open, and then I'll have to sew this to this, press it open, and then we can do those. All right, that's, that's the plan. <laughs> that makes sense. I kind of had to think that through a, a sewing process. And actually, I think I might do, do this one, and then this one, and then this one, and then this one, because then when we sew these, this will be farther along on my chain, so it'll be easier to cut off to sew this one. I know that sounds like a lot, but um, it'll sort of make sense, I think. So we're gonna just do a bunch of piecing here, and and the trick is I gotta I gotta remember where everything is so we don't mess this up. Um, this is always the part I get a little nervous uh, with all with all this, just keeping it all in the same place again. So I just gotta keep my layout here and keep it in check. So all right, let's start with these two together. <laughs> Just, just the sewing order, and I mean, like, really, you don't have to think it through as much as what I just did there. I'm just, I'm always looking for efficiencies and and all that. All right, now let's do these two. Oh, long day at the fair. Oh, fun. I think our fair is starting soon here. Are, are you working the fair? Or were you just there all day? I know, like, just going. I mean, like, that's a, such a big dream. All right. I think it'll make sense once I get that far. I'll, I'll let you know what I mean by the by going in this this order. All right, I'm gonna actually jump down here. Oh, sweet candy, that's a, that one's fun. That's that, uh... oh wait, is that the one? There was another, there was two called kind of a candy thing. Is that the one that looked like a wrapped candy? Or is that the, I think there was a later one that was named something with candy too, wasn't there? All right. Now I'm going to go back to this one. Get those seams to match up the best I can. All right. So the only thing I'm kind of trying to match up on these is at some, sometimes I have uh, this to a seam put together here and a seam put together there. So there I'm, I'm trying to make sure that those seams are together, but all the rest of it, I don't think I need to do that. It's just when they kind of match there. So I'm paying attention to that a little bit. Okay. So see, now I can leave. Oh, grandkids hogs. Oh, that's so 
fun. I love going to look at the animals. That's my, my favorite thing going there. All right, so I'm gonna cut off this first one that was on here, and now this is that this is that one that was on the top. So I'm gonna put this guy on there. done uh you know I, I suppose I could have done the two middle pieces right after each other but by doing it this way I thought um you know I thought it might be hard to trim it and then sew that second one right away but I don't know anyway just the little chain pieces that I'm just getting through here so now here's that other use that other big piece this one is the bottom. So let's throw that guy on here. So on these instructions, it does say, maybe that's like where I kind of sped through this, but it does say what order to sew them in. So like this one sews to this, that's the first thing, then this to this. This is what I skipped. Instead of sewing this to this and then taking this off of my sewing machine so I could re-put it onto this one, that's why I skipped it. I, I did this to this, then these two, then these two, then these two. Then I went back to this one and sewed this on, and then this one sewed this one on. So now I'll have like all these rows kind of sewn. So that's that's kind of what we're doing there. Get the ender on. Okay. So this is the mid this is the second one. This is the top one. This is the bottom, and this is the top and the bottom. Top, bottom. Okay, so let's press all of these open. Okay, so first I'm gonna just press the one side just because it's easier. I didn't, I didn't really press the seam there first. Usually I, usually I like pressing the seam just to set the seam. Sorry, there. Set the seam. And I'll press to one side and then I'll press it open. I think we're going to finish this block. That's exciting. We might go a few minutes over again tonight. I mean, it's not like we actually have a set time for how long this takes, but I, I try to keep it between 40 minutes and an, and an hour, or 50 minutes and an hour, I mean. But we might be going a hair over again tonight. But we will have a finished block, which is awesome. And that means that this was just a two session block, really, because I wasn't here all those other days. That's nice. This this is another one of those ones that looks more difficult than, than it is. Actually, you know, it does deal with all these triangles though. Um, I guess it's it's uh, quicker quicker than it seems. I'm gonna press the front of this quick. Alright. Yay, it's starting to look cute. Alright, let's do this guy. the seam, then press it open, or press it to one side, which is what I'm doing here. I can tell with the pressing that uh, we did a lot of bias sewing and cutting too because it's all, these all want to stretch in weird and different ways. That's the challenge of this block is that sewing on the bias. Just sewing on, or pressing on the front. 
two for good measure. Nice and flat. Okay, this guy goes here. And I keep forgetting it's always this pressing and cutting that takes forever. I was thinking we, you know, it'll be a little more time over than I thought. Oh, thanks! Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with these color choices. Uh, it's actually turning out a little cuter than I thought it was going to be. Sometimes when I just choose colors, they all kind of, I feel like, mush together in a weird way when I'm done. But I'm kind of liking, I'm liking the values and the contrast and stuff in this one. I tried to do, go back to the blues and stuff again, because uh, I, I said this a couple times, but um, when, when I when I laid out all my blocks, when I had my 50 or so, when I visited my mom and we both laid out our, our blocks, I realized that, you know, originally I wanted a really blue looking quilt, and I was realizing that it was definitely veering away from the blue quite a bit. Uh, like I was... Uh, there was a lot more, a lot more red and a lot more yellow than I wanted. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to revert back to getting more blue. I know there's a red in here, but it's it's mostly blue. So I want for a little while. I'm gonna try and get some blue vibes back in, in uh, in the blocks. I don't think I have quite 50 done it yet. I have, um, you know what? I think I'm 11 or 12. Uh, unfinished ones. I've started, I've started, oh wait, there's only one that I haven't started, but in general I've pretty much started them all, except for the one where I was on vacation, but all the other ones, yeah, all the other ones I started, but I don't have like 11 or 12 of them completed, so technically I'm not quite at the, at the 50 mark yet, but we'll get there. We'll have three days again where I'm not actually doing stuff. But yeah, like this week would have been, um, if, if I was here, if I didn't have, didn't take off like the past two days, we would have had uh, two days to, to work on other blocks. So I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, that'll be, that'll be uh, figured in again. Some quick blocks to catch up on other things. Alright, there we go. Oh yeah, I, I, I did the salvage saver. That one I got done. That one was a nice one day one. I think I that one and just one other one I was able to do in one day. That that paper piece one I think. That um, that was like one big crisscrossy paper piece. Those two I think were one dayers. Oh yeah, so that one I did use my own salvage. That's the only one that kind of uses all my fabric. That one I did did use my own salvage just for that. All right, now these two go together. Now in theory, we kind of really want that point in the middle, so I think I'm gonna put a pin there. Yeah, so I, I already kind of didn't match this up totally correctly, but um, I'm going to put a pin in this one right through where those those two fabrics meet up. Yeah, so I'm going right through that point and I'm going to put it through the where I want this to meet. I'm going to put it right there. Oops, let's get it through the middle though. All right. So I'm going to go I'm going to keep that really vertical while I line up these edges. Great, and then I'm going to put a pin on either side of that to kind of to hold it in place while I sew. Get one on this side. Still keeping that middle one as vertical as I can. All right, and now I can I can take this out. 
Uh, but now when I sew, I'm going to aim right for this point where they both meet. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping by doing that I have a pretty good center when center point when, when I'm done here. So let's do that one. After this one, then we just sew these two guys to it, and then we can sew the three together. And I think that's just, yeah, I know it's we're going to run a little late, like maybe 15 minutes or so, but I want to get this guy done. We're so close. Now I'm aiming for that point. Alright, next pin. Oh, I got a little cut in here in this fabric that I didn't notice before. Luckily it's going to be in the seam allowance though. That's what I get for using scraps, I suppose. Let's see how we did. Eh, not too bad. This is the one that I didn't quite line up before, but, um, you know, could be worse. All right, let's press that guy. Yeah, I think it's going to be super cute. I really like this center. I like the, the little, uh, a little red pinwheel. I think that's neat. Cute little pinwheel. <laughs> I think it turned out just fine. I actually kind of like when things don't perfectly match up. I mean, it's a really good challenge to really get all your points to match up just for a learning standpoint and just improving, you know, your skills standpoint. But I, but I, I do kind of don't mind when when uh, things aren't perfect on these quilts. Unless that was my challenge. If my challenge is I'm gonna, on this block, I'm gonna get every point to match up perfectly, then, then you know, that's, that's the goal for that block. But usually I just, I think it's kind of fun when they don't. Oh, look at these little, little cat eyes popping out here. All right, let's get this as flat as I can. Okay, now we sew <laughs> little guy. I like him. Little red pinwheel. All right, let's sew the sides on. Which I want this guy the, the, in this direction because then these little, this funny little kitty is uh, right side. A little peeking out there. Okay, let's get this guy. So in this, this one in theory is another place where we're gonna want. Um, so this point, this point here should in theory match up with, with this point here, but you know what? I think I might just wing this one and see, see how close we get. I kind of don't want to pin again. That's just, that's just too much work. We'll just do our best to have it be right. I'm just going to line up. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to line up the edge and then just aim for this X in here and hope that it matches up. But the pin way of doing it would definitely be an opportunity for me to be like a way more accurate. But oh uh, well. Okay, there we go. I can definitely tell there's a lot of bulk here at this corner. So it's probably probably good that we're pressing open. All right, here's where I'm gonna kind of aim for this X. All right, I think that's decent. And uh, oop, this, let's make sure this seam is open underneath there. All right, Get this guy in there. I like this black. I think this is just fun. Okay, let's see how that went. 
Not bad. I think I think I might be sewing my scant quarter a little too scant, but that's okay. So I'm not going to press that one open until until I sew this side. So this one I'm going to do the same thing. I'm not going to bother pinning. I'm just gonna just gonna sew. All right. But I'll I'll aim for that X again. So I just did that thing that I've been trying to avoid at the end. One of my things that I've learned that I have to improve on with the sewing straight is at the end, I kind of veer off, I like swoop off, and I did that here again. Uh, you guys can kind of... I just kind of let the machine dry for me and like I went zoop, just off at an angle. So I've been, I've been trying to avoid, avoid doing that, but ah well. So here's this guy, let's press him, and then we just gotta sew this guy up together and we'll call it a night. A little late tonight. Top row looks like cat ears. It does. We could do like a little cat design. Oh, you know what? We talked about this already. We have not had a cat related um, block yet, which seems crazy for a, a quilt uh, with, you know, 80 or so designers and it's about quilting and how fun quilting is and that no one designed a cat block yet, I find that kind of crazy. Or we haven't had a cat block yet. So if we go all 100 blocks without having a cat block, I will be flabbergasted. How about that? We can all be flabbergasted together and then then we'll have to like make our own cat block or something. Alright. Press that guy open. Didn't do that good job. It's getting really bulky here. Yeah, if if we um we don't have a cat yet, then, then I'll have to we'll come up with some sort of design for a cat. <laughs> it's just like should be a prerequisite for quilt alongs, I, I think. Although this is my first quilt along, so I don't know the, the rules of if it's a rule to have a cat in all quilt alongs or not, but I think it should be a rule. All right, we are definitely getting real bulky here, so I'm not doing a very good job at pressing open anymore. Cool. Center block, kitty center block. I will have to start sketching. Oh, that's sad. I'm sorry to hear that. That's sad. That's the worst. I've had three kitties in my lifetime. Kitty, Caddy, and Sammy. Aww, that's sad. All right, here's our center. All right, let's finish this up. Let's sew this top and bottom and then press it and we'll be done. That's the worst when you lose a pet. All right, so I'm going to try and match up these little areas, but I'm going to do it without pinning. I'm going to just kind of aim for the seams again. Here's the first match up here. All right, then 
let's see what's going on next. All right, so here we want to match up this X with, with this, and I think we need to pull it over a little bit. Uh, you know what? It's just going to be what it's going to be. Let's keep sewing. And then these, I gotta pull it a little bit too. Alrighty. So really I probably should have pinned this just because there are lots of seams that we want to have match up correctly. But, you know, it's getting late and I guess I'm cutting corners now. Let's see how it went and then we can decide if we pin the bottom. Oh, well that, the first one looks great. Oh, but yeah, here in the middle we're starting to, we're starting to veer. This last one looks alright too. I, I tried to pull it to get the seams, but the, the middle one was hard to see the seams, so that one's not matching up totally great, but you know what, I'm kind of okay with it. So let's do the bottom quick and then we'll, we'll call it. I'm just going to do the same thing here. Yeah, it, it's plain. It's plain fine. It's just in reality I should really, you know, like, because this, this point right here should match up right with with this point here so in theory I should be doing that pin thing through there um, just to make sure that the seam matches up and everything else but meh that's what I think about that so take that block you got a meh okay there we go Alright, so while the needle's down in that first seam, I'm just going to kind of match up the second seam the best I can. I think that's good enough. Aim for that X again. I think if we do that, we'll get close. Alright, now I'm in that seam, so I'll match up the last seam. Spicy man's the name of the cat. It's really funny. Okay. Oh, what a sweetie. Gray with white boots. I have a kitty calendar, so I get to see a kitty, a little kitty, new kitty every day on my kitty calendar. All right, so let's see how that one did. This is the bottom. All right, that one matched up, matched up a little bit better. So that's cool. Awesome! Yay! All right, let's press this thing and be done. So this one I'm gonna press open again too. So I'll just set the seam first. Uh, we'll do a quick, we'll do a quick check to see how close to six and a half inches we are. The hunter adventure, that's cool. We get a cat like that too. Kitty, Kitty was the hunter adventurer. Kitty and Caddy. Actually, Caddy was an adventurer, but he, Caddy always adventured pretty poorly. <laughs> he always got a little, little beat up on his adventures. Kitty didn't ever. Kitty didn't get beat up on. Actually, not until she was kind of old, and then I think we we think she got stuck somewhere because she came back like a couple weeks later, kind of scrawny and weird, and we think she lost her hearing and, and all that. But so that was uh, that was when she was kind of older. Kitty, Kitty was real old. You know what? I'm gonna just keep these pressed to the sides. 
Let's just give it a good press on the front. It's just going to be so bulky either way, whether I press it open or press it um, to the side. So, meh. I'm just going to press it to the side. Yeah, I'm really liking this square. I could see doing more of more of this square. It's just gonna that that way that we did the the flying geese. I I would totally try that again. That was pretty cool. We got those flying geese done in like no time at all. I'm kind of liking how this is connecting to these little. Um, I wanted it this way so this, this kitty face could be upright. I kind of like how these are just shooting out here a little bit. It's kind of see-through because we use the same fabric here. It's kind of fun. All right, I'm totally digging it. I am loving it. Let's see how we did on the six and a half. Eh, a bit shy. I mean, the horizontally we're, we're spot on, which is awesome. Uh, we're a good, a little over a sixteenth of an inch off on top, though. I know it's scary when they they and we we always had outdoor they were outdoor cats like they were, they were farm cats and then um then we uh they stayed outside and stuff and um yeah it was always kind of scary when we didn't see them for a while all right there we are guys that's it for tonight I'll flip you around so I can show you it uh you know next to a person it's just the size oh that was Pandy oh poor kitty. All right, hey again, guys. Here we go. So this is uh, the size. So these were actually really small. They, you know, they get smaller once you sew it into the into the seam. But fun, a little pinwheel. It's like a see-through pinwheel. I'm digging it, and we got it done. <laughs> thanks for. I mean, we're oh wow, we're like almost 20 minutes over. But thanks for sticking with me, <laughs> guys. I'm. Uh, this one would have been sad to. Uh, to not finish <laughs> and just have like a couple seams left. So great, new block tomorrow. Uh, yes, yeah, another one bites the dust, exactly. So it's a new block. I don't know if there was any previews or not. I'll have a peek tonight yet. Uh, this will go on YouTube. So this will be at Penguin and Fish Movies early tomorrow. So thanks again, guys, and new block tomorrow. I will see you then. Good night. <laughs>